Welcome to day 11 of our Enchanted Princess Norway and Iceland cruise. In this episode, there's queuing chaos to disembark in Reykjavik. We go on a full day Golden Circle excursion and visit a secret location. Stay tuned to find out why Good Spirits is our favourite venue on board. And in the Princess Theatre, we get our first celebrity entertainer. Hi, I'm Tom and I'm Dom and we are Tom, Tom and Dom, Dom Travel. Travel and welcome to day 11 in Reykjavik. Well, here we are in Reykjavik. <laughs> so we've been really looking forward to this port the whole cruise and we're finally excited to say that we are here. Absolutely. Uh, we pretty much made a, a quick uh, visit to the buffet uh, because our excursion was picking us up at half past eight in the morning so it was a pretty early start this morning um, so a very very quick buffet breakfast and then we made our way back to the room just to pick up a few things to take with us yeah. and then we headed down to uh, deck six where yeah. they were disembarking us. We did stop at International Cafe on the way to pick up a couple of bottles of water. Yeah. As usual, you can use um, your medallion and if you've got the drinks package, the bottles of water are free. So we thought we'd better take one along with us because we have a long day ahead of us. Yeah. When we got down to deck six, we were, I think our jaws hit the floor because oh. the queue to disembark, we have never seen anything like it. No. What a nightmare. I think because... Uh, because how Reykjavik um, has so many tours, so many excursions available and majority of them start actually really quite early in the morning that all the passengers want to get off and we ended up in a massive queue. Yeah, so we did end up having to wait around about 10, 15, 20 minutes to disembark yeah. Princess. Now we weren't early to join the queue. Um, as I previously said, our excursion was booked for half past eight and I think we joined the queue at quarter past eight. So we were a yeah. little bit panicky that we were going to miss our yeah. tour bus. And I think it's because at previous times we just walked, walked off, off. Walk off the ship, so we didn't even think about that. No. So the panic was on, but um, we made it through security and we've just enough time to spare and reach the bus at exactly half past in way yeah um, it's, but we were the last people to reach mentioned. the bus yeah they were literally waiting for us to get on the bus um it is it's important to note that it is quite a walk um from disembarking all the way to sort of um, the bus stops where all of the excursions sort of pick you up mm. and to be honest we've never seen anything like it because there is literally just tour bus after tour bus after tour bus in this massive car park yeah. but it all depends on where your ship docks so for us we were quite far away um, for the MSC ship that was next door to us which had done an overnight in Reykjavik they were much much closer yeah, short walk for them um, so it, we we did find our excursion bus, uh, but it did take a, a little bit of walking backwards and fro because pretty much they're all they're all labelled and titled exactly the same Golden Circle Tour, Golden Circle Tour. <laughs> so you have to look specifically for your Golden Circle company name, and then you'll find your bus. And uh, as Tom just said, you know, we were the last ones on the bus. They were waiting for us, yeah. which meant we had the worst possible seats. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, we did have to sit separately. We booked our tour with Venture Ashore um, and it was probably the best offer, wasn't it? Much cheaper than um, booking with the ship, with Princess. And it meant that we were in a small group on a small minibus, weren't we? So, yeah, there was only about 18 of us. Yeah. Um, but it was packed, jam-packed. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the worst seats were, there was two at the back, but we, we literally couldn't fit two people in there. We did try. No. no. Um, and there was one seat right at the front next to the driver yeah. by the door. Uh, so we ended up, one of us sat at the back and one, one of us sat at the front. front. It didn't really matter though, did no, it? No, it was, it was fine to get us to and from the places. Um, and it is important to say that our driver, Al, also was the guide. And he... Um, he was brilliant. So he was doing t two roles, really. So, and um, as soon as we were on board, he gave us a quick introduction to who he was, about Your Day Tours, which was the company that we were with. And then we set off to our first destination. 
The bus journey to our first destination was absolutely beautiful. Mm. Al was absolutely amazing, sort of talking to us and explaining the things that we were driving past. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was really, really good. As we said, it's, it's, it was a long, long excursion, nine hours in total. Um, but our first stop was at the Klingvel National Park. Oh, I don't know why you keep trying to pronounce these places. It was the National Park. It's a stretch and challenge. <laughs> we arrived there and there were lots of other tour groups there. Of course, it was so uh, busy. early morning and I think it tends to be the first stop off for most people, unless the weather's bad and they readjust the route. But for most places, it's the first stop in all the tours. Um, Al got off with us and basically gave us uh, a full sort of tour and talk about the area and then he allowed us to go off independently for half an hour, 45 minutes just to explore and have a look at all the different sort of geological sort of rocks. Yes, yeah, so um, the National Park is based on the fault line and there is some towering rocks and um, like um, a walkway through the, through, the, through the rocks I suppose. Through the fault line, I suppose. Would yeah. you say? Yeah. Uh, absolutely spectacular. Really something unique and different. Very, very busy. Um, you know, you couldn't really stop. Uh, otherwise, you'd just be pushed along by the people behind yeah. you. Yeah. He gave us some history. He said this is where the early Viking settlers used to meet. Um, it was like their court, wasn't it? Like their court, yeah. So lots of great information there. Spectacular views. Um it was a great start to the day. So after exploring uh, the National Park for a little while, we headed straight back onto the bus mm -hmm. and to our next destination. Now, which I can say this one was Gulfoss Waterfall. And what a waterfall it is. Absolutely spectacular. If you're going uh, to Iceland, this has got to be a must-see place. It is fantastic. The sound of the water, the roar of the water is amazing, isn't it? The mist. It's in the face. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. So we parked right at the top car park. There was two, a lower car park and an upper car park. We were in the top car park um, and we walked down slowly. And as the um, waterfall opened out to us, yeah. it was spectacular, wasn't it? So we headed down some stairs past the visitor centre to get a closer look. Um, Again, incredibly busy. Incredibly, yeah. So many people there, but spectacular views. And it is an absolutely huge sight. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can sort of spread yourself along. Obviously, myself and Tom wanted to get right up close, which we did. We did. So we headed down um, a small track, really, isn't it? Yeah. Down to the side of the waterfall so we could get as close as possible. Now, I think this is an open all year round. It's very weather dependent because actually it's quite slippery, yeah. isn't it, on that path? Even on a, a bright yeah. day. The spray. The spray uh, keeps the path wet and slippy, really. But we got down right to the bottom of the path and got right up close to the waterfall and the sound it's incredible. was incredible. The views being up so close to that water was spectacular. So a uh, really special moment being there, wasn't it? It was. Um, after maybe half an hour, just soaking up the scenery and just, you know, it, it was absolutely breathtaking. Uh, we then made our way back to our pickup location. We got dropped off at the top car park by the visitor centre so we could walk down uh, and admire sort of the views. Uh, our pickup destination was actually at the bottom, thankfully. Yeah, so yeah it involved less walking and yeah. it made it easier for us. Um, so we were straight back in the minibus with Al. Um, who once again as we're driving along to the next stop he gives great commentary tells us about what we're looking at what the local sites are um, something about what it's like to live in Iceland um, so great information constantly information uh, very happy to answer questions as well yeah because he did mention about that moon buggy that drove over the, the hot lava yes he did yeah. so that's another excursion if you're interested it's yeah. quite pricey but i bet it'd be absolutely incredible i don't think it drove over hot lava it yeah. drove over the glacier oh yeah it drove over the glacier <laughs> that's in the middle i don't think you recommend us to go in hot lava <laughs> yeah. it is it's like a... it's the opposite to hot hot lava frozen water, water yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
but amazing experience nonetheless. Yeah. Um, so we arrived at our third destination after maybe 20, 30 minutes on yeah. the coach. Completely different this time. We yeah. went to um, a local um, farm really that was um had stables in and it was the icelandic ponies um oh they were lovely they were lovely however mm. it was a bit much for us wasn't it really because everyone piled off there were two or three minibuses that arrived right, at the, at the same time. time and they were everyone was trying to touch the horses Grab and the stroke horses. the horses lots of children there it was all a bit much, much for us yeah um, um Interesting to note that Icelandic ponies are a lot tamer than normal ponies. Yes. Um, so, you know, if some of these tourists were, were trying to stroke normal ponies, they'd most probably try and take their hands off. Yeah. Uh, but Icelandic ponies are so do docile that they're just so chilled and laid yeah. back. They are absolutely amazing. It was, it was. And very easy to train, apparently. Yeah, hopefully. If that's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> um, yeah, there was other things going on on the farm. So there was um, sheep there, there was a wool shop, there yeah. were sheep dogs going about. So it was just quite nice to see um, something more traditional, yeah. something more local happening rather than just the big tourist sites, wasn't it? Yeah, and this was obviously the stop off where you could sort of buy stuff. Buy stuff, you local. Know, local jumpers. Although and the price of some of those um, things are um, really like, expensive. Probably more than the cruise, to be honest. <laughs> But no, they were very expensive. Very expensive. Then, after the farm stop, we were on to one of the most famous attractions. Um, it was the geyser. Yes, the geyser. We've both been really looking forward to it. Yeah. So, this isn't geyser, because geyser, the place, doesn't actually spout water anymore. No, nope, try But up. it is as close as... So it still is a geezer that is still spurting water, probably every five to ten minutes, isn't it? Yeah. And it is spectacular. Um, again, very, very busy. Very busy. So there's a massive tourist information centre across the road. Yeah. That's where you'll be dropped off and then you'll walk across the road and up towards this geezer. Yeah. So um, when you arrive there, you'll see many, many people with their phones out waiting and waiting and you do you do have to yeah. stand there wait to get the shot um but when the shot comes it is fantastic and you hear everyone Woo! It's, uh, it is it is good we well even we stood there for about 10 minutes yeah just holding the phone up and smiling just so, in case yes. it, it sort of shot up so, so we, we could get the photo <laughs> so we watched it first of all for about two three times didn't we we did which is great sometimes it's a small Spurt. burst of water <laughs> other times it's really big um, then we decided that uh, we'd follow the rest of the people and head up to the top of this hill. Yeah, because there's like a, a coast path, a walkway that goes all the way up to the top to this yeah. viewpoint. And there's lots of little hot springs everywhere. Um, dotted around everywhere. So it's actually a really nice walk. And but loads of signs not to touch, not to put you your do hands not in. not touch the water. The water so is boiling it's very, hot. very, very hot. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice walk uphill. So, But if you've got mobility issues, you wouldn't recommend going up no. this hill at all and it was very windy oh my god how windy so was it? windy it was so weird that the wind there was just unbelievably strong because um, the geese is kind of as much as there's like a little hill and an incline yeah. it's still quite an open area so the wind just rips straight through so, yeah as we said we then headed up the hill past some of the springs um, and it was some spectacular views from up the top of the hill as well, wasn't it? It so, was beautiful. Um, you could see for miles. Yeah, a lot, a lot of flat land uh, spread out across Iceland there, wasn't it? And then we took a different path, like a woodland type path, back down towards the geyser. Stood there and tried to get a few more shots, which was probably another three or four times. But by that time, we'd realised that it's five, ten minutes between each one. Um, and it was time to head back to the bus. So we... Uh, Dashed really differently. Um, um, neither of us had had anything to eat apart from a couple of snacks that we bought along no, uh, from, no. from the ship. So we thought, oh God, we've only got five minutes until we get back on. We better yeah. stop at that tourist information centre and just quickly go in and grab ourselves something to eat. Yeah, because it was due to be our lunchtime stop as well. So I think the idea was to go and see the geese go off two, three times and then go and have lunch for 20 minutes or something. But... Because we, took, we were yeah. too busy watching the geezer, we missed all that. So, 
uh, we thought, oh, we'll just grab a, a Burger Creek or something. But the when queue. we saw the queue, there was no chance no we were going to do that. So unfortunately, we had to skip lunch. I think we shared an apple. Yeah, <laughs> we had to skip lunch and head uh, back straight on, back onto yeah. the minibus because we were off to another stop that we were really looking forward to. Yep, so it took about 45 minutes to get to this destination, so it was a little bit of a drive, but obviously we've been on the coach all day anyway, so it didn't make much difference. Uh, but this time it was uh, the secret lagoon. Yes. The secret lagoon. Yeah. So what makes this secret? Well, it's definitely nowhere near as popular as the Blue Lagoon, Blue, no. um, and that's a good thing. And what is better than the Blue Lagoon, in our opinion, is that it is actually fed by a natural spring. So this is all natural water, naturally heated, yeah. not run off nope. like the Blue Lagoon. Um, so it's completely natural. And to be fair, it was Beautiful. spectacular. So we got there, didn't we? And uh, checked in. Yeah. Um, and grabbed a couple of snacks from yeah. the shop there because, like we said... We were hungry. Um, we were hungry. Yeah, no hot food, though. No hot just, food. Just light snacks, drinks, hot drinks, cold drinks, and crisps, crisps. and candy slash chocolate. Just little bits like that. So we yeah. bought a bag of crisps and a chocolate bar each just to tide us through. Yeah. Um, and then headed to the changing rooms. Um, it's important to say, probably, that in these changing rooms... Um, if you're sharing, you are not allowed to wear any Anything. clothes. Nothing um, at all. And people were getting told off for wearing, for wearing their swim shorts. So we were like, mm -hmm. uh, really quick then when it quick shower and then straight into the game. Yeah, quick shower and then you can put your shorts on. Um, yeah. Uh, and then you just head straight into the Blue Lagoon. Yeah. Oh, Blue Lagoon. Secret Lagoon. Secret Lagoon. We didn't go to the Blue Lagoon. We do. Uh, yeah, straight into the water and the water was beautiful so, so warm yeah and i was sort of because it's quite well i would say it was a massive sort of lagoon but it was well it is fairly big the size of a swimming swim pool, pool. Yeah, yeah no um as you got closer to because the hot spring was right at the back and sort of as you walked closer and closer to the back the water just got hotter and hotter and hotter it was yeah lovely. you couldn't even stick I at couldn't. one point it was so warm i had to stand near the a back little bit of that yeah, yeah. It was fantastic. It was a beautiful experience. Yeah. Well, what we also liked was the fact that, yes, there were tourists there. Us, yeah. Um, but there were also so many local people. Yeah, it was much better. Much, much nicer. But I suppose more authentic. Yeah, yeah. We grabbed ourselves a, a little alcoholic beverage as well, we which did, you were to allowed cool to down. drink while you are in there, yeah. which is really nice. Um, Very expensive, though. Well, isn't everything in Iceland? <laughs> but... It was worth it, wasn't it? Was, One it was off. lovely. We enjoyed that very much. And our guide Al came in. Um, not into the water. Not into, into the secret lagoon area and took photos, photos of us. Yeah. So uh, that was really nice of him, wasn't it? It so was. It made me feel all get a picture. Um, and then what we did, we had mm. a little explore around the grounds of the um, secret lagoon. Very quick, though, because once you were out of the water, it was absolutely freezing. Yeah, it soon gets cold, doesn't it? Soon gets... Well, you're but, wet. <laughs> but there's other hot springs dotted around the yeah. Sea Lagoon. You can see just over the other side of the river because there's a river that comes past there as well. There are greenhouses which are also fed by the steam of one of the hot springs. It was fantastic yeah, experience, really, wasn't it? Really, really good. Um, again, back to the changing rooms. No short shower. And quickly get ready and back onto the minibus. Back onto the minibus. Yeah. So we got back on the bus and we were given a little treat, weren't we? Yes, an authentic Icelandic snack. Yeah, which was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, which was included in the tour. It's, everything was included in the tour, yeah. um, apart from the drinks and, and snacks, snacks we bought in the secret lagoon, wasn't it? Um, we then got back on the bus, like we said, had a... Had a Icelandic treat and it was time to head back to the ship if you yeah. believe it so we've been on the tour probably about eight hours by now yeah um and it was a good hour back to the boat the yeah ship sorry back to the ship um uh, and again we headed back a different way so Al could show us more of the landscapes and more attractions and there's lots of areas where you can just see steam rising out of the ground fantastic it was beautiful. So, beautiful place beautiful part of the world yeah so yeah about an hour trip back to the ship and once we arrived back, we uh, dropped off in exactly the same place. 
we arrived. Although Al had offered anyone on the bus, if they wanted to, they could get off um, in Reykjavik itself and spend some time in Reykjavik although you would then need to make your own way back to the ship. And it was a good, what did you say, 40 minute walk back? Yeah, yeah. So had we'd already spent nine, nine hours, hours by that time off the ship, um, we decided to get back on the ship and just chill out before we started our nighttime, nighttime. activities. Uh, getting back onto Enchanted Princess was relatively straightforward, no queues. There was that little bit of a walk mm. from the car park back onto uh, the, the cruise ship, um, but wasn't too bad at all. Um, when we got back on board, we literally went straight back to our room yeah. to get ready for the evening yeah. as it was about perhaps five quarters to six. Yeah, we didn't have much time at all really. So quick shower, get ready, and we headed out once again. Yep, uh, so as we were a little bit early this evening, uh, we thought, oh, why not have a glass of wine in Bellini's? And that's exactly what we did, seeing as we'd been on our feet all day. Yep, yeah, you had a nice glass of Pinot Noir, and I had a glass of Pinot Grigio. Very, very nice, and uh, set the evening off nicely. So we sat there for a little while and just soaked up the ambience of the music from down on the piazza yeah and then we made our way to the amalfi restaurant for our seven o'clock dining reservation mm -hmm. usual spot where we sat yep i had guess what to start in my usual soup keeping it light so we can enjoy the rest of my meal and for my starter i didn't actually fancy any of the the, the starters from the menu i opted to uh, have the fettuccine Alfredo pasta, mm. which is tagliatelle in a cheese sauce. And I tell you what, it is fantastic. We've spoken about how good the pasta is on board Princess, yeah. but it is beautiful. You so. really enjoyed that, didn't mm. you? Yeah. And then for my main, I went for the duck and it was fantastic. So glad I tried that. It was beautiful once again. And for my main, I went for the steak fajitas. Of course. And they were okay the steak for me was just a little bit too tough yeah um uh, but it was okay it, you know i enjoyed it and i ate most of it yeah. but it was just a little bit too tough but you know I, I suppose if that steak had been done perfectly it would have been absolutely beautiful because the flavors with the chili was was really really mm. nice and then for dessert i went for that princess classic the love boat um again little chocolate heart arrived which was as, as it always has been really <laughs> nice. That's one of my favourite desserts, but I am a chocolate lover, yeah. so um, it was fab. Yeah, Princess do some absolutely beautiful desserts mm -hmm. slash puddings. Um, uh, this time I went for the uh, Black Forest cake yeah, with you... sour cherries. Oh my yeah, God, absolutely cherries, delicious. Yeah. I'd definitely have it again. Yeah. And it, uh, all in all, though, we had another enjoyable dinner, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, no queuing, no waiting. Really, really good service That's down service. in the Amalfi. Another couple of glasses of wine with our dinner. Oh, that's very usual. That's very usual. After dinner then, we uh, headed down to uh, one of our haunts, which was Good Spirits. Usual haunts. Usual haunts. Uh, you know, we really do enjoy Good Spirits. We like it on Enchanted because it, it's a lot bigger than it was on Sky. It's nice open yeah. space. Um, there are windows so you can see out and look out into the oceans. Beautiful. Yeah, and the cocktails are spectacular. Yes, they are. They do so, do uh, some absolutely fantastic cocktails. Yeah. Some nice, some... Perhaps wouldn't be our favourite, like that Mexican Al Fuego one that's got um, jal jalapeno peppers in it. And, yeah, you know, but uh, some people rave about it. Absolutely they love do. it. They do. Cruise monkeys, they love it. They love it. <laughs> but yeah, no, we're not fan. No, you'd rather your uh, ultimate, ultimate gin and tonic. tonic. That's, yeah. what you've got that's my it. number one. That's my your number go -to, one. Isn't it? Um, okay, so after Good Spirits, once again, it was time to head to the Princess Theatre. So this evening in Princess Theatre, we were both quite excited mm -hmm. because uh, in Reykjavik, we picked up a number of celebrities and guest performers. Yeah, we've done a little bit of swap help with the performers now. So where we'd repeated perhaps twice the guest performers on our previous, what, 10-ish days, yeah. um, they'd all gone now and we've got a new lot of performers on for the last few days. And a couple of those were celebrities. Yes. Uh, so tonight in Princess Theatre was... Da, 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 Peter Howarth from The Hollies. No, no idea. idea. So we didn't know who he was, but 
There they obviously are... was some big fans there because there's a lot of whooping and <laughs> hollering and things. So. There was a lot of Hollies fans and supporters in, yeah. I think. So if you know the Hollies, you would have loved it. If you don't, you'd be like us and say... But it was fantastic. He looked very, he was great. We enjoyed the yeah, sets, didn't we? Did. So um, we weren't familiar with a lot of his songs. No. But... Um, he went for it anyway, and he it was very popular, wasn't he? Well, I really, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and yeah. you know, I, I thought he was absolutely amazing. Yeah, really, really good. So um, apparently, just quite a few ships. So you may see him on a cruise that you're on. Yeah, um, he's also offering, or he'll, he's also going to do a meet and greet later on in the next couple of days. Yeah, um, so you can Chance get to up, plug some CDs. Yeah, yeah, get up close and personal. Yeah. So, um, okay, but he, he was very popular. He was. After Princess Theatre, we then headed to um, Crooner's Bar, didn't we? We did, so we managed, uh, there were some seats in there, so we thought, right, let's get in there quick, and because uh, Crooner's is a very, very popular venue on very Enchanted. Popular. And as we've said before, Crooner's is um, a bar that has been reintroduced on Enchanted Princess. Um, it involves some acoustic performances from um, singers at the piano, and it's more of a lounge style, yeah. isn't it? And once again, there's a bit of cocktail menu there, um, as well as all the other usual drinks you can get on board. But it's very popular, so you have to get there swiftly, I would yeah, say. Very. With a few drinks um, had in crooners and listening to um, the pianist, singer, that was there, we then thought, oh, well, we'll finish the night off and head to Vista for our final nightcap. Yeah. Um, once again, as we've said a few times um, on this cruise, there is a Spanish contingent on board, um, a Spanish tour group, I should say. Yeah. Um, so um, every now and again, Vista Lounge turns into a Spanish disco and tonight was Spanish one disco. of those nights. Yeah. So all the music tend to be reggaeton yeah. type of thing, quite Spanish disco, a lot of younger. Yeah, it was a it was younger, young crowd in there. Yeah. So it was all very good. We, we stayed there for a drink. Yeah. It was interesting to um, just people watch and see what was going on, wasn't it? Yeah. So and then after the day we'd had, where we felt it's like we'd been going for days rather than a few hours. So definitely time for bed, wasn't it? Yeah. So just one quick drink in Vista, and then we headed to bed. What we can say is, if you want to visit Iceland, doing it on a cruise has been fantastic it's incredible and visiting Reykjavik today has given us a little taste and we definitely want to come back again because even though we did the Golden Circle tour there is so much more we want to do isn't yeah. that so uh, we'd have loved to have gone around Reykjavik yeah um, Reykjavik itself there's other tours, tours isn't it so there's lots we'd like to do um we'll so come back we'll be back Thanks for watching our Day 11 uh, Enchanted Princess vlog series in Reykjavik. If you've got any comments or questions, just pop them in the box below and we'll get back to you. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to check us out on social media.